家都知道吗？我很奇怪，到现在还有的吃。儿子，这么多年来，我辛辛苦苦的把你养大，让你有最好的教育。等你赚钱回来养这个家，但是你看，你都做了什么？你把所有的钱都输掉了。妈，你给我闭嘴。My dad wasn't always like this. He was once a happy man. In China, he was a well-respected engineer, but was unable to move up in his company. One day, he was offered an engineering position from an American firm, and he moved all of us to Dallas, Texas. A week later, the firm went bankrupt, and he lost his job. Still optimistic, he applied at other companies. I'm sorry, we have no place for you. This. This does not qualify as experience. You won't be able to be an engineer unless you get a degree from an American school. After several interviews and rejections, my father decided to move us to Chinatown, Los Angeles, where he managed to get a job as a restaurant cook. He had lost all his self-respect. That's when he began gambling and abusing my mother. Ma, you give me a big jaw. I'm your mother. You listen to my words. You are a unrespectful father. Is it that you don't care about your mother and your daughter? Mother, you're a liar. 别管我。In America, she lost all her friends and all the social activities she was used to. She became a prisoner, confined to a cramped apartment, doing daily household chores, just to keep herself busy. You why are you coming now? 你晓不晓得，你去买东西的时候，我在家里一直都打扫卫生。你看看我的手，我有多辛苦啊！妈说答对，我不可以再沉默了。你不要赌了，我跟你都疯了。疯了。你说我疯了，你竟敢这样跟我说话。After the first month in America, it was evident that our family could not survive on the wages of one person. So my mother immediately found minimum wage work at a garment factory. Now my mother comes home after 10 to 12 hour days work only to face the verbal abuse of my grandmother and the physical abuse of my father. She was the only one that seemed to understand everyone's feelings. My father's loss of self-respect, my grandmother's need to assert some control over anything, and even my struggles in finding my own cultural identity. Despite her teachings and previous outspoken self, she became quiet. For the sake of the family, she kept in everything.
I was 11 when I first started school in America. School in America was completely different. Not only was the culture foreign, but I didn't know the language, and the children found many ways to tease me. I learned to block them all out, and like my mother, kept all my feelings inside to protect myself. It was when I entered high school that my English teacher thought I was depressed or antisocial because I wouldn't speak in class. My teacher referred me to counseling. None of the school counselors wanted to see me because they couldn't speak Chinese. So they then referred me to counselor Tina Cho, who worked out of her home. I understand you don't like to talk to others, and you don't have to talk to me if you don't want to. But I hear you're a pretty good writer, and I want you to tell me about yourself, your family, or your life through stories. Koima. Write me a story once a week and put it in my mailbox, okay? Great. I found an alternate means to transmitting my feelings. Not only did writing allow me to share my feelings, but it inspired me to speak. I was only six years old, but I can remember vividly the night that changed our lives forever. Since that night, nothing has been the same. I am a second-generation American-born Chinese. As an ABC, I have a dual identity. I am both Chinese and American. Every day, I must struggle with the generation gap between me and my parents. Though the adversity I face today cannot be compared to that of my parents, the struggles still remain. This is the story of a family of Chinese immigrants. This is my story. It continues on.